So was any. Um, I feel like I needed to take a deep breath before I even open my mouth. You know, because there's been a lot in my heart. There's been a lot in my spirit. There's been a lot in my head. There's been a lot um, all over all of me, you know, with things that uh, have unfolded over the last um, past, you know, 24 to 48 hours. And just really <clears throat> reflecting on what have we become as society. Because society, it is made out of us. And so many of us as part of society are so deeply broken and wounded that we continuously do the same to each other in an attempt to either vocalize, amplify our voices um, in order for us to feel heard, seen, um, and have some sort of visibility. You know, so... I've been really thinking about a lot of things because some of those things also resonate with me. As a spiritual healer, I am not immune to societal ills and the brokenness of society because I am born into the society. I am growing up and living in the society that is broken, that is made of a collective of individuals that are us, you know? Um, um I hear you, Nana. Um, yeah, I hope you can get a lot of son um you're asking that we pray for you and your family get a lot of sun because a lot of people don't get a lot of sun i had COVID uh, last year um yeah around june and um the sun really helped me and i steamed like three to four times a week um and took all natural herbal remedies your clonyani um your ginger garlic drank it with a um, glucum tree so i i and i took vitamin c as well and some immune boosters just to make sure that i'm well so i recovered very well but i got a lot of rest but not only indoors out in the sun so as i was saying is that um you know my heart is also quite heavy i think not only heavy because of what is unfolded for us over the last uh, 48 hours but heavy for my own stuff as well and just thinking how a society we have perception towards each other because of how we show up. So I show up as glowing. I show up as as happy because I'm smiling and I'm good. Um, but there's deep things that we each are experiencing and are holding. And most of us have not really normalized the thing of speaking truth to the things that we are feeling. So we have actually really dismissed people to uh, being honest about how truly they feel. You know, just because they feel that way does not make you um, any less of a human or any less worthy because they've experienced you in a particular way. Um, but I've also seen how as society, we have really moved away from from discussing issues of mental wellness and health. And I've said that for several times. I mean, when I started their lives last year, um, daily live streams is because we were experiencing lockdown and I, and we were struggling mentally and emotionally to cope with being away from my loved ones, being away from daily routines and daily things. Um, and yeah, so when we were, we, were, we were struggling with that, I thought, let me use this opportunity to inspire, enlighten, ignite some hope in people by discussing a variety of issues, not only African spirituality, because it's not in isolation. Spirituality is about a collective of things that really, truly makes us well as, as humans. Um, so I spoke a lot even last year about um, pain, hurt, loss, you know, um, experiencing toxicity in relationships. And uh, for me, when I saw uh, I my heart broke on Monday, I spoke about you matter. I spoke about how important you are and how you need to honor yourself, honor your feelings and honor what you are going through. And I said, you cannot heal that which you have not acknowledged for yourself. You really cannot heal that um, which you are ignoring or you are dismissing or you are playing it, you know, under the carpet. And because, you know, and let me speak, I can't speak of other communities because I am not born into those communities. I have no experiences about those communities. So I don't like speaking secondhand information sometimes because then there's no level of empathy or deeper understanding of the issue that I'm trying to address. So here I'm going to speak about the black community because I am black and I grew up in that community and I'm still part of that community because majority of my interactions are within black folks, you know, and how we have not really made it okay to discuss issues of mental health. 
because mental illness has been um, something that we've been running away from. It's been something that we've been shy away from because we all want to believe that we should be okay all the time, 100% all the time, and that's not accurate. And when we're seeing things that happen, when we see people killing themselves and committing suicide, that also as well as taboo in our community because it's seen as shameful and a disgrace. And I know a lot of people will say, will your ancestors accept you if you kill yourself? Will your ancestors, as if really ancestors don't also see what's happening on the other side or they don't see things that are happening because we all we have never lived our lives for ourselves we've lived it for other people for ancestors for god but we have never really been true to ourselves and hence we are suffering so much and we are mentally suppressed by you know the expectations of of, of everybody else except expectations of ourselves because the high expectations and the bars we are setting we're setting those bars against who and what and and for me we can say in a time of turmoil and in a time of pain, we also have become a nation that likes to point fingers at each other. I mean, if you look at Twitter trends, there has really not been any positivity. And that's why I struggle with, you know, other social media spaces, except the ones that I use for teaching, because we really are not there for each other. We're not there to uplift, we're not there to support. We're waiting for one person who is occupying what we perceive as a prominent space to be at fault and we drag them down. And we don't even understand that they, are, they too are human. They too might be struggling. Just because I'm not talking about the death of Lifuno and, and that bullying is wrong does not mean that I'm condoning it. And I understand that people say sometimes silence is consent, but have you ever asked yourself that silent might be a trigger? You might have been triggered when when we i think it was two years ago when we experienced a lot of femicides i got so triggered when there was a lot of you know women being sexually assaulted raped and killed i i, I was so triggered deeply that i got paralyzed because my own experiences replayed themselves my own experiences of being violated replayed themselves and how do i speak on an issue without projecting my own pain? How do I speak seeking justice for other people, but not for me? I, you know, it's a very complex thing. So sometimes people become silent, not because they don't wanna speak about it, it's because they're in trigger, they, in, they have the story. And when I saw, I'm catching a moment because I got triggered when I saw Lefuno being slept around. Um, and, and that's why sometimes I don't like watching this kind of material, not because I don't want to confront the truth, but it's because it reminds me of my own painful experiences that maybe they're two folds. One is that I would like to re get them buried and forgotten, but maybe it's that it's, it's unpeeling another layer of my onion of pain that I thought I've healed and I've dealt with. But maybe the other layer here is that I'm trying to keep myself sane because I know my own fragility around issues of violence. I know my own sensitivities around issues of violence, you know? <clears throat> and we can be so judgmental as, as a people because we have so much high expectations of so many of us, you know? Whoever that you are, that, you know, we get, we, there's an attack on a woman innocently because she's been bullied she dies there's an attack on a young man because of his own sexual orientation i'm 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 not sure because I, I i didn't read the he or she my apologies about um the young person who got killed because they were homosexual um so you see how do you keep how do you keep up with everything that is happening around our society and keep saying within yourself and keep together within what you are also currently experiencing. We all are going through a lot of stuff at the current moment with COVID and so many other things that we're experiencing that we have not normalized to openly speak about them because when we openly speak about them, we still get criticized. We get labeled as attention seekers. I mean, Valente uh, has just spoken about, you know, her, her abuse in the relationship and then, then she gets labeled. Right then, the ones who don't support it get labeled like it's just a cycle of violence against each other. We're continuously going round, and that's why I personally struggle to write, to comment, to speak out. Not that I don't want to, but I'm asking myself as well when we speak out, how are we shifting the system? 
what is a way in which we can really shift the system that is so broken that continuously rewounds and inflict pain upon each other besides talking about the issues and what is really the deep issue what is deeply rooted at the ills of our society because as isangoma when i'm consulting and i find out that you are experiencing witchcraft i'm asking why because where I sit and my own understanding and experience of Ilozi, it is there to protect me against such attacks. So if I have not been protected, how come? Right? Versus just it is Abatagat. Like I'm really asking, have we become still present enough, compassionate and empathetic enough to really deeply interrogate the whys after the whys and after the whys, right? Because we have, we have really fueled up and, 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 and breeded toxicity in our society, even in our attempt to really address some of the complex issues and and the deep issues, I mean, gender-based violence has been with us for as long as I was young, I remember it existed. It's not a new phenomena. It's become more prominent because and more visible because of social media spaces where videos can be uploaded, videos can, you know, and even when those things we do, we're raising awareness at the predicaments in which we're facing. But what about the families? What about the victims themselves? Like, do we ever think deeply before we really react to what certain situations? These are the questions I'm asking myself. What have become of us as a people? What have become as us as a black people? Where there is so much hatred towards each other that we're waiting for an opportunity to drag somebody down. We're waiting for an opportunity for someone to open their mouth and then we take it out of context and we make it something that it's probably not. Do we also do understand that the public figures that of course we call role models, our you know people who inspire us, they are also people. Do you also take a moment to understand that Goko Dinawa is still a person who has her own issues to deal with, her own children to raise, her own life to live, that is also full of complexities and that she experienced pain as you do, that she experienced heartbreak the same way that you do. Just because she's wise, just because she's gifted, just because she's out there doing her thing does not mean that she's well put together. Do we really get it? You know, do we really get it? Do we get it when people are speaking up, then we label them as stop playing a victim or be strong. Like there's just so much. I don't even know where to begin. There's just so much. But I think I'm asking, what would it take for us to move from a place of judgment to a place of empathy? What it would take for us to move from a place of criticism and critique to a place of compassion? Like what is it that we are really needing? Because I'm struggling to figure it out myself. But I'm saying with the things that have occurred over the past 24 hours, and they're not new because they keep on popping up every year, every three months, there's a new person who's brutally killed. There's an incident of brutality and we talk about it and it trends for 24, 48 hours, then what? Because for the fact that it, 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 it doesn't shift and nothing shifts, no matter how many protests we do, no matter how many t-shirts we make, no matter how many chants we sing, no matter how many matches we match, no matter how many slogans we utter, we still find ourselves at point A, where we have started. You know, I'm asking myself, that are we as a black community really prioritizing mental and emotional wellness? Because mentally something is psychologically deeply wounded within us. And of course, historically, we have been a race that has been deeply pained and hurt and wounded that we really don't want to speak about it because we are always encouraged to get over it, that that pathology exists in our generation where when people are going through stuff, we don't want to listen to what they're going through. We want to dismiss it and ask them to be strong and get over stuff. 
Have we ever thought maybe the reason that there are so many Izangoma being called to take up the calling that maybe some of us are not even called to heal spiritual elements, but they really called to really deeply heal that which has been broken generation ago that exists in our generation now. Right? Like, can we stop also misdiagnosing and mislabeling things as what they're not because we think it's not for us? We are not immune. We are actually the people who have experienced the most painful, the race that experienced the most painful, tragic incidences that have really disturbed our psychology because how we perceive and value ourselves is skewed. And how that plays out as a narrative is how we show up in relationship with each other, how we show up in relationship with our money, how we show up with a relationship with success, how we show up in relationship with so many other things. Hence, we will not really celebrate one another when we are attaining success. We will not really celebrate people who have pioneered movements, who are social change agents. We will call them all sorts of names because we have not really psychologically healed the discourses of how we have been perceived and made to believe we are. These things are really deep. And can we take a moment as a race and say something is really deeply wrong in our psyche? Because I'm not saying these things do not exist in other societies. They, prom they do. And I mean, if you look, you know, globally in Africa, black people are in the majority in South Africa. They are. So these issues will look like they're prominent in our own race, but they're not. We are not exclusive. But there's something that's quite exclusive with our nature of really dragging each other down. That feels for me, it is something that is more prominent in the black community than in other communities. Because we don't hear a lot about how other people are pulling each other down. They would celebrate. I mean, I saw Anele being dragged on Twitter for just saying a statement about, you know, Miss South Africa that maybe she has not spoken about Lifuno because she's going through her own stuff. Now she's not vendor enough because she didn't stand up for a fellow vendor person. How dare we be like that? How dare we, we actually want to put people's values against what we are expecting of them? I mean, take a note of this. How do we want to put value, like, how are people's values determined by our own expectations of how they need to show up? Right? Because when apartheid happened and there was the truth and the reconciliation, we thought we would reconcile as this generation. But clearly we have not reconciled what our ancestors have experienced. We have not reconciled the pain and the traumas of what our ancestors have been through. I say that when people say black men are violent, do you understand that they were victims of violence? Does not condone them being violent now. But can we show a bit of empathy about how come? Why are you showing up as this? You know, so I'm just, I'm just, you know, so I'm just thinking and I'm just wondering. I'm not saying what I'm saying is the truth and it's the answer, but I'm throwing these provocations to us for us to really deeply think about our own behaviors and how we're really showing up and how we are really, you know, act advocating for things and how we are calling for change. Is it really helping? Is the strategies that we've used over the past few decades to really call for change around certain issues of societal ills, have we really, really, really addressed? We've put a lot of resources, time, money, you know, organizations, communities, but we have really not seen any significant change. What is then wrong? Have we really asked ourselves? What is then wrong? And have we really asked ourselves, how come many of us now are, are having the calling? And can we also normalize that people who are called also do suffer from mental illness? That you can be Isangoma and be mentally unwell and have mental illness. It is okay. You can be Isangoma and have, you know, borderline personality disorder. Have, uh, you know, there are misdiagnoses, but sometimes th that diagnosis is, is accurate. Like, can we make it okay to seek help? You know, definitely Africa has got huge generational trauma. And we really don't even want to 
touch on it. Because the minute we touch about this and then this one goes into this, we can never be united because we can say put South Africa first. Then something happens and we're like, no, but you see the causes or the tongas or the this, like there's also tribalism. South Africa is deeply fragmented. As as the South Africans, we we have experienced like not only colonization, we also experienced apartheid, which was about tribal segregation. And we don't want to speak about those things. We don't want to remember those histories because they've been changed. You know, Sheffield Day is now Human Rights Day. Yeah, what happened in Sharpeville was a violation of human rights, but it wasn't about the humans, it was about the black people. It is the black people that died on that day, innocently, protesting peacefully. You know? Can we become, historically, we're going to be repeating these patterns if we really do not address some of the root causes because even when you look at it it's like if you discuss root causes and you look at historical injustices and in and, and historical traumas and and the wounding that happened there we just want to slide through it because we need to get to the next thing because diplomacy has become our language and i'm not saying this become revolutionary and say chase because it's not going to solve anything by saying okay now let's kill these people because nothing it's recreating the same thing but i'm just saying that can we create spaces and places of honest conversation and truthfulness and f being frank, even though it is hard to hear? You know, sayings like you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free was, were not said because of a limbo. They were said because there's some truth in those statements as well. I don't even know what the topic is. I'm just speaking about certain things that I'm reflecting on as a person. You know, so for me, it, you know, even just our tactic, uh, tactics and strategies and, and, and plans of actions are not really that effective because we're finding ourselves last year, this time, there was a lot of um, violence towards women because now it's not men violence against, um, against women, but it's women against women. Now we're also seeing women violating men. You know, and then when women don't speak about it, then there's a fight about how come we're the feminist. It's like, it's just a spiral. You know, we're going in circles and we are really not, we're really not getting at the crux of things. There is a mul there's multiple layers of where we really are failing. Right? We are really failing as a people. And we are failing ourselves and that's going to have an impact on the generation after us and so forth. What is it that needs, what do we need to change? How do we change the system? Because we cannot really change it from the same thinking that has created it. Because the, the, the systems that we're putting in place come from the very same systems that have kept us stuck, that has given us the problems that I don't have the answer. I'm going to save this life because I'm talking. What will it take for us to move to what truly we have known ourselves to be that has become so cliche and that even when we speak about those terms, we don't really resonate and relate because there is just so much pain, so much hurt, so much trauma that saying Umuntu, Ubuntu, those things don't make sense to us anymore. Because when you hear it, you hear of a cliche term that defines Africa. But that was a principle of engagement when we interacted with each other. But what did our ancestors truly mean by the spirit of Ubuntu? What do our ancestors truly mean by Mutuki Mutukabatu? What do they really mean that we have really forgotten the essence of those statements that when we say them, we remember them Heritage Day? Right? Like, we really need to remember that we are Africans on the 24th of September. The very same month which we need to be celebrating a new year. You know, it's become bright day even because we are trying to be accommodative. So it's become about brying. It's no longer becoming about celebrating the diversities of heritages. But also I struggle with Heritage Day just one day. 
Yes, it's important as a remembrance, you know, to amplify us remembering our identity and the multitude and the variety and the diversity in our identities. But I also still struggle for it just being a day where, like, I just struggle with certain things. We've, there's a lot of principles that we have forgotten that we have really forgotten those principles as abundant. And I'm just saying, like, can we remember that? And who is going to remind us? And where are the places and spaces we need to be having these frank conversations? Because these cliche conversations and these debates we are having, debate has its place and time. And yes, it, se it serves us to really, you know, distinguish between fact and fiction but we've been debating things forever and we're still stuck. You know, we're still really stuck. We, you know, but we really have not had dialogue. And dialogue for me versus debate, debate is about I'm right, you're wrong. I know you don't. And dialogue for me is like, I'm right, but so could you be right too. And I'm willing to listen to your perspective and your input because it might broaden and widen my own perspective and enrich what I already currently believe in. You know? So I'm just saying, like, how, how are we having conversations and how are we engaging and interacting? I mean, my work as a facilitator has always been about um, participation and, you know, getting not only equality, but equity as well. So, and it's when I remember how we used to gather as Africans under the tree in the circle, because energy flows and circulates because what goes around comes around. So we would really be mindful of what we say because it's going to come back to us in the circle. Thank you, Ashante, from California. So I'm just really, really asking. You know, it's like so complex. There's so many infused issues. But I think for me, you know, one of the things I would love to conclude with is just one is that let's normalize certain things. We need to really normalize that a lot of us are suffering and experiencing pain and hurt, and that's impacting on our mental health and our emotional health. Because I think we are we have really not done so, um, because we have run away um, from from really confronting the reality and the truth around mental illness. I mean, there's a woman who got killed, and and that you know I I saw the video and I was asking myself what happened. Then I I later heard she got banned because she was accused of witchcraft. Whether that's true or not. Because just because we don't believe in it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. But could it also be that she was psychotic? even though she's wearing Izangoma clothes. And you see already their perception and, and the reinforcement of a stereotype that people who do acts of witchcraft are Izangoma. And yes, there are Izangomas that perform acts of witchcraft. But according to my understanding, as Umelapu and Dabugo, the minute you cross over to the other side, you're not recognized as Umelapi. You're not recognized as a healer because you have chosen to walk in the dark. You might have been trained as such. You might have been qualified as such. But the minute you do not work to make well that is not well, you are no longer classified as a healer. But we continuously, as a community, want to associate such people as us, even though, yes, they can proclaim to be us, but are we educated enough and are we informed enough to know that the minute somebody crosses the line, they can no longer be recognized as Isangoma? Because Isangoma or Inyanga is the one who is here to make well that which is not well. How do you make well that which is not well? By breaking families apart. And that's what I fight, you know, because... And it's not about perfection because being a Sangoma does not make you perfect. It does not make you, uh, you know, immune from making mistakes and errors. We make them all the time. But can we also own up to them when we make them? Can we say, yes, I have flawed and I've made a mistake here and I have not. Are we willing to read? And I think for me, can we also 
normalize doing what we call the soft work. People want the soft life, but they don't want to work on themselves to experience the soft life because we have associated soft life to accumulation of material. And yes, that's nice because I also like beautiful things, but you can, you know, um, accumulate all the material. You can have a hundred bags and shoes and stuff, but if you are not well within yourself, no new bag is going to fill that void. So can we make the soft life about investing on self, self-health, self that's physical, that's emotional, and that's psychological? Can we also normalize that? There's, you know, there's that. And, and can we start to really demystify our own understanding? So can we challenge our own perceptions and paradigms? Can we say that actually my, my belief system is, is, is quite biased here? What I believe in might be actually promoting an ism and a schism, <laughs> you know? what I'm, I don't even know what I'm going to save the stream and, and label it as because I don't know. It's just, you know, mental issues, like the normalization of mental issues. And can we also, as healers in our respective space, maybe because I'm a Sangoma, maybe say as a Sangoma, can we be advocating for our patients who even have the calling and have spirit? Like, can we encourage somebody who's experienced witchcraft to go to see a psychologist? Like, go and see a therapist because it is traumatic to have an attack. It is trauma. Or go for life coaching. Can we say that alongside what I'm going to give you, because the muti will eradicate the physical element and will stop the spiritual attacks, but it will not heal the mental discourses that which have occurred post your experience of that attack. I like that real talk with Coco Dino, mental. Yeah, I'll call it ment mental health. Actually, let me pin this. Thank you. You know, so can we really, and I like it when I see a lot of people, you know, a lot of black psychologists coming out and others being trained as Isangoma as well, because I just graduated one who's a psychologist and now she's a Sangoma because there is a way in which we also understand and work with mental issues and spiritual callings that we are not seeing the two as separate, but we don't mix them where they don't need to mix that a multiple intervention is also required for holistic healing. I actually got feedback from a patient on, 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 on my DM who wasn't initially so pleased with the gogos that consulted her when they said, please go see a therapist before you resume any kind of treatments with the Institute. And she was conflicted because she sought out answers now and she sought it thinking that pattering or doing a, a cleansing or a ritual will deal with the deeply seated psychological imbalances and illnesses that she's experiencing. It will eradicate the traumas. And after Monday, you know, after Monday, she, you know, she, um, after the stream, I said, you met her and you cannot pass her or pray your problems away. Because thank you for the people who keep on quoting. I hope you still tuned in because we're still on the thing of we're going to be celebrating a hundred thousand K for last, um, lunch on that still is there, you know, uh, and, and she said, thank you. It makes sense when the Gogo said to me, I need to go because we do that at the Institute. We do that. We say, before we resume with you, please kindly go see someone because right now you are under emotional distress you are psychologically distressed so there is no way there is no way what we're going to do with you is going to work with what you are currently experiencing your state of mind is not sane i've had people be brought to me who are gifted but are also experiencing psychoticness and I could see this as a brain imbalance there's a chemical imbalance here i mean fortunately because you know, I'm a life coach and I, I did a whole lot of other alternative therapies. I can identify when somebody is called and yet needs another intervention as a, as, 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 as a foundation towards me doing the work I need to do with that particular person. 
Some people do require that because there's ways in which, as Ikobela, there is ways in which you ha you can assess good, this issue is a calling. But at the current moment, this person is mentally not well to even absorb or work with the process at hand because Ugutwasa, it's mentally intense. Already, I always say Ugutwasa, it's distressing to the mind and to the to the emotion. Your emotional and psychological well-being gets completely affected by going through the Utwasa process. And that's why I encourage the students, either during the duration of the Tosa process or post their Tosa processes, to go through some therapy. Had I probably not went through therapy, I would have lost my mind. Had I not went, I would have been really beat. I mean, I still am shredding off, you know, Tosa stuff, pre tosser experiences, post tosser experiences. So there's a lot to deal with all the time. There's a lot. And can we also normalize being wrong? And it's okay if you were wrong. Doesn't take away you is is it doesn't take away your worth. It just means that you genuinely made a mistake. Or you misinterpreted or you misdiagnosed. Can we normalize certain things? And can we become okay with people doing things at their own paces? Like, let's not force things on. Like, let's do away with with, with these things of by this age, you got to do it. Because I feel like people are overwhelmed because there's so much expectations of you should be married by this. You should have children. You know, like there's a lot of things. When we... When I'm consulting that I'm realizing that a lot of people are suffering... Like, people are really suffering because of a lot of things besides the, their callings. I mean, majority of the people I see, because that's my gift, and I've also understood that is my the work that I'm called to do is to work with gifted people. And therefore, it means that I need to really be vested in, uh, in understanding the human psyche, the human emotion, the human, you know, their EQ, their IQ, um their SQ, which is their social intelligence, I need to really understand the human in, in all its multiple facets because if I'm going to be working with the gift in which they're bearing, so I need to understand what is actually getting in the way of them bathing that gift that they're bearing, you know, at all these multiple facets. So I need to be really, truly invested on what is really happening. There's a lot of things we need to normalize. There's a lot of things we need to be okay with. My heart does go out to Lefono a lot. And so many others who whom their stories did not make it on social media. Because for me, it's not only Lefono is the girl who was so cruel. She must be deeply, deeply wounded herself to do that to another human being. Because only somebody who is so bruised that has normalized their own bruising will want to inflict pain onto somebody else to make themselves feel okay and bigger. You know what I mean? I always say when you are a victim and you don't heal the experiences that which have victimized you, you become a perpetrator. And we do see a lot of perpetrators on social media, how people attack each other so easily and quickly, how people mislabel and misinterpret what people are saying so easily and so quickly. That's perpetration. We don't see it as, you know, because it's not evident that somebody's bruised. Like we have not really seen the emotional abuse people give each other out there and the psychological and the verbal abuse. I mean, verbal is straightforward because when somebody swears and calls your name, you can tell. But the emotional abuse that also happens. I really feel hurt by what happened or what's happening, because it's not only Lifuno, it's a lot that happened over the couple of 48 hours. But there's many, many. And can we also, when people are crying for help and saying, I'm tired, I've had enough, I'm in pain, and not think that they are acting out and they're seeking attention. They probably are seeking attention because they need help. They just don't know how to articulate it. You know, Yantanda, um, 
maybe I'll come back for a generic thing. I just needed to reflect. So these are like, this is real talk with Coco Dineo, speaking all things mental illness and, and the, the psychological ills that we as a society, I think we've got collectively, we are mentally not well as a people. I'll be back in a minute. Love and light for now.